everyone. Today we'll be talking about batch and real-time analytics at Lyft and how we warehouse our data to power decisions uh, with ClickHouse for our customers and ultimately for our business. So I'm Gina, this is Ritesh. Uh, we're representing data platform at Lyft today. Uh, and specifically, we work on the batch computing side. So this means like anything ClickHouse, Spark, and Trino. I also just wanted to give a quick shout out to my entire team who came here to support us at Open House. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> so next, uh, first wanted to go through Lyft's purpose. So at Lyft, we are driven to serve and connect, and we'll touch a little bit on that with how we use ClickHouse uh, analytics to power our decisions, like I mentioned. Our agenda today is first we'll dive into like our architecture and then we'll go more into our batch and real-time uh, pipelines, ingestion pipelines, and we'll wrap up with our recent updates and what's next. So before we dive into the architecture though, it's probably important to understand the story of ClickHouse at Lyft and how it's evolved uh, throughout the years. So we actually first started off by using Druid uh, mostly for our low latency analytics and for our yeah, our low latency solutions. And we did have one specific use case uh, where we had self-managed ClickHouse. And we decided that it was actually easier for us to move over, or it was a better idea for us to move over to uh, in-house ClickHouse or self-managed ClickHouse. So we made that move. You can check out our blog post on it. And more recently, we moved over to the vendor, so to ClickHouse Cloud. So to dive into our architecture, you can see on the left side, I'll go over the ingestion side. So in our batch side, we, uh, we aggregate our offline data into S3 using Trino. And for our real-time ingestion, Ritesh will talk about more. Uh, we have a couple of different ways of where we stream our events through Flink into ClickHouse. And then from our querying side, we have our client applications. We have observability where we use the Grafana plugin for ClickHouse. And we also have analytical tools from our end where we use to visualize trends for ClickHouse data. Uh, so we do use ClickHouse Cloud, like I mentioned, and we also use the console UI pretty heavily at the company for anyone who wants to like, you know, play around um, really quick and, or you know, do whatever you want. Uh, but we do have a Lyft access control. If you're familiar with using ClickHouse Cloud, you know that by default, uh, the, the developer, the de Sorry, the developer role is read only. And so we do need like an automated way to be able to assign new users to ClickHouse uh, to whatever permissions they need so that we don't need to manually grant everything. So in terms of our scale, we have uh, around like hundreds of queries per second. It's also growing uh, continuously. It peaks at thousands, and then in terms of our reads and writes, we read around 450 terabytes of data and write around four terabytes. In terms of our batch ingestion, which is what I'd be covering today, so I'm going a little more in detail here. So like I mentioned before, we have our offline data sets and we're aggregating it to S3. And we have this own uh, TOML kind of like uh, cron setup where we have all of these TOMLs which each table you can see here has all this information about your source data, how we're aggregating it, and then our target, which is like all the ClickHouse table information. And it's just, this is just a nice way for us to organize all of our um, information. And we also like run this uh, automatically in a cron setup. So uh, all of this is really nice. So if we want to change columns or whatever, um, schema evolution, this cron figures it out and solves it for us. So more specifically from the ClickHouse side, it's really nice because you can use the S3 function in ClickHouse. It's super simple to use um, and read from whatever S3 bucket you want. We read that into our temp table and we swap each partition into our target table. In terms of how this helps us power decisions at Lyft, we, one of our critical use cases is for dashboarding, and our dashboards use terabytes of historical ClickHouse data for business insights. So you can see how this might be really nice to like slice and dice the data where long-term aggregations reveal all these like critical trends pretty quickly. You can look at it over years, over months, you know, whatever you want. And it's also good to have the batch ingestion option so that you can optimize resources for workloads that don't necessarily need to be in real time. And of course, 
you know, everything comes with challenges, right? So uh, some of the challenges we ran into is from the story that I mentioned earlier of how we moved from Druid to uh, self-managed ClickHouse and then to the vendor. So uh, since we were already on a self-hosted version of ClickHouse, migrating to the cloud had a couple like data parity issues with in-house systems. We had workarounds, support was great. Uh, we also replaced some existing in-house table structures to work around cloud feature availability or what was available at the time. Uh, so one of those things that was really interesting is uh, we didn't have the joint table engine at the time. Uh, and we actually found out through support that our use case when we were joining like one of, we were joining a couple like really large tables and we realized that actually we don't really need the join table engines for this particular use case. Actually dictionaries were much better because our uh, data wasn't moving that fast, like the data we were joining with, and it wasn't that much information. It wasn't that much data also. Um, but also, lastly, like just scaling the platform overall to process terabytes of data. And now I'll pass it on to my teammate, Ritesh. Okay, hello. Uh, I'm Ritesh. So uh, thank you, Gina, for covering the batch ingestion side of things. So coming to the real-time ingestion, uh, this is what it kind of currently looks today. Historically, it's been kind of evolving. Uh, will it look the same six months from now? Probably no. Uh, so let's go over what do we do on the real-time ingestion side. So currently, for our customers at Lyft, we primarily support two different kind of sources for them to be able to bring the data into ClickHouse Cloud. Uh, one of them is Kinesis, and the other one is Kafka. So on the Kinesis side and the Kafka side, eventually we are using Flink as a streaming application to kind of help deserialize. Uh, we have a configuration that we have on a per event basis. Our Kinesis side of uh, streams kind of handle all the analytical events that we want to eventually ingest into ClickHouse. And on the Kafka side, it's basically any service that's kind of producing to uh, Kafka, they want to access that particular data eventually into ClickHouse. We kind of have a Flink app for them as well. Previously, when we were on the in-house ClickHouse, we were heavily using for the Kafka use cases the Kafka table engine, but we did not find a parity of it on the cloud side. So we had to kind of resort to a different solution where we created like a similar Flink pipeline, which would kind of help it deserialize batch ingest into ClickHouse Cloud. A couple of other things around how these pipelines have kind of evolved. Uh, one of the new things that we have done for our Kafka customers is, uh, so at Lyft, we have a centralized protobuf ideal repository for everything that gets produced at Lyft with the protobuf schemas. Uh, every event, every message, you have a centralized repository for it. So previously, we did have the issues with customers kind of trying to copy this over onto the ClickHouse cloud for Kafka table, sorry, for the in-house ClickHouse for Kafka table engine. That was like a hassle for them. And also they needed to kind of flatten this and ensure that the parity existed. So if the protobuf ideal was updated for that particular message, you were also updating it within the ClickHouse server with it, uh, that was in-house. So we kind of removed that completely. And we introduced a simple configuration kind of a schema specifically for those kinds of customers where we kind of create a one is to one mapping. We over here very heavily use Java reflection, wherein you, if you give us the deserialization uh, nested module to deserialize on for a particular event, we dynamically deserialize your event and immediately ingest it into the ClickHouse Cloud. This is a simple mapping on of what your event or your message basically would translate to eventually a ClickHouse Cloud for our customers to query. How has it, how all of this has helped actually for our uh, decision making? Who are the customers who are actually leveraging this? So primarily it's been our experimentation, campaigns, targeting, uh, signaling teams. Uh, it, this includes forecasting teams as well. So if you're running any experiments, you wanna quickly see what happened with those experiments. So there are a bunch of these events that are being streamed through either through Kinesis or through Kafka, and they are being used for signaling and better data-driven decision-making uh, for our customers. Uh, so our challenges have actually evolved over the time. Uh, so as an example, we had a lot of zookeeper issues when we were kind of on in-house ClickHouse. Uh, we also had 
uh, issues around operations. I think a couple of other uh, presentations also mentioned this, uh, specifically around our EBS volumes. How do we kind of upgrade it on our own? So that's where actually ClickHouse Cloud, we decided to evaluate to see how much operational aspect of that entire cluster can be offboarded. And ClickHouse being stateful, stateful upgrades are obviously very hard. So uh, in order to ensure and kind of see, we did a POC, we kind of figured out how the load and everything works for our kind of scale, and it has kind of worked uh, magically till now. A uh, couple of other challenges that we actually hit around was we had to do the entire re-architecture on the Kafka table engine. Uh, when we kind of do, when we were kind of doing this, uh, ClickPipes was in preview, uh, so we were not kind of completely confident given the timeline whether we'll be able to wet it in time and we'll, whether we'll be able to productionize it because these are all product, uh, workloads that were already running in production. So uh, with that, probably in the future we would be evaluating ClickPipes as well given the performance and given what we are kind of seeing how the product how that part of the product also has evolved. And we do have a couple of challenges which we are kind of trying to solve specifically around our batch sizes of inserts, uh, async inserts, uh, fine tuning, and kind of ensuring uh, data freshness actually is there for our near real time customers. So on the recent updates, like what the team has been up to, uh, the team has been primarily kind of leveraging a lot of other ClickHouse Cloud features now, basically. So we have kind of added access limits, authorization. We have been playing around with async inserts. Uh, on the ingestion side, we have been tuning the custom batch sizes, as I mentioned. And we are kind of preparing the system for the next level of adoption, uh, which is ensuring that we are able to scale, see where the limits are, where are we breaking our current configuration, and obviously think about kind of scaling it based on that. So what's next? I covered the last point around like organic and inorganic uh, adoption. Uh, for our existing as well as the new customers. We are getting higher amount of traffic and higher amount of interest within the company about the product, so we want to kind of ensure that we have the system that's ready for it. On the first point, we want to go a little bit deeper. We do not want to keep ClickHouse or ClickHouse Cloud as an isolated product, so we are working on the overall deeper data ecosystem integrations, which includes end-to-end -end data completeness checks, data discovery, ability for users to be able to clearly understand what data exists within it and how they can kind of leverage it. And along with that, we are working explicitly to enable a, a, a set of use cases wherein direct export from all of our offline tables can be enabled into ClickHouse Cloud for our customers if they want to use it for uh, data-driven decision making. Next, we are hiring, so please join us. And thank you so much. Uh, this journey has been this journey has been really evolutionary, and everybody. I'm going to miss names, but everybody from Tanya, Brian. Uh, Melvin, uh, Shri, uh, yeah, there will be like four or five names I'm going to miss. Like, you guys have really helped us out a lot during this journey, and we look forward to continued collaboration. Thank you so much. Yeah.